Some of the world's greatest artists have painted themselves hundreds of times. Others have painted themselves only once. But why do they do it? Is it an inflated idea of their own importance or their own beauty? Or is it, as in the case of Van Gogh, because they were too poor to be able to afford a model? We know that viewing the world through the eyes of master artists can enhance our own experiences. But now we're going to take a look at how master artists view not the outside world, but their inner selves. You'll see that selfies are nothing new. Self-portraits have probably been around since the first caveman saw his reflection in a stream and tried to recreate it on a wall in his cave. This is the oldest known cave painting, and it was actually done by a pre-human Neanderthal. Early self-portraits sculpted in stone include this one from 1365 BCE by Bach, who was the head sculptor of the Egyptian pharaoh Akhenaten. We can only guess what his features were associated with back then, but here he is with his wife, but he's the one who looks pregnant and has bigger breasts. The earliest surviving self-portraits after ancient times are by the Dutch painter Jan van Eyck, man in a red turban, created in 1433, shown here as an example. But it was Albrecht Durer who kicked off the selfie craze during the Renaissance, when the self-portrait became its own genre. He was just 13 years old when he drew his first self-portrait that we know about. Nine years later, with a lot more formal training under his belt, he painted Portrait of an Artist Holding a Thistle in 1493. Five years after that, with 14 years of self selfie painting experience, he did this, his most famous one. Leonardo da Vinci may be the world's most famous artist with the world's most famous painting. We're fascinated by his legends, myths, rumors, lies, and possibilities. As far as we know, this drawing is the only surviving self-portrait. It's dated around 1512. And since he was younger in 1512 than he looks here, we wonder if he was painting a selfie of his future self. My own personal favorite artist is Artemisia Gentileschi. I'm captivated by her story and how she overcame so many personal tragedies. Though not appreciated until long after her death, her work was too powerful to go unnoticed. Here is her self-portrait as a female martyr, which she did in 1614. This one is Judas slaying Holofern. It recreates a scene from the Bible, but she paints it using the face of her rapist as the victim and her face as the murderess. Check back or subscribe to this channel for a full video featuring her work and story we'll be putting up soon. Rembrandt did more than 100 oils, drawings, and etchings of himself. He's almost always in front of a simple backdrop, and he doesn't sugarcoat it once he starts to get wrinkles and gray hair. He also seemed to honestly recreate whatever his mood is. You can see the stress in his face here when he painted himself after some very serious financial losses in 1659. This one is 10 years later when he was 63 years old. Scholars argue whether Spanish painter Francisco José de Goya y Lucientes is the last of the old masters or the first of the moderns. He was suffering in his later years from both physical and mental illness, and he shows himself here with his doctor. Gustave Courbet was a realist genius. Courbet actively promoted himself and his ideas with his selfies. This is The Desperate Man, painted in 1844 when he was relatively unknown and desperate for attention. He eventually got attention, and maybe even more than he wanted. In 1873, he was exiled from France for his political views. Edward Munch drew lots of selfies showing how badly he believed life and the particular women had treated him. This is Ashes, which he completed in 1894 
after a brief affair he had with a distant cousin that didn't work out very well. We know Claude Oscar Monet suffered from cataracts, but we're not sure how much influence this had on the blurriness of his paintings. This is the self-portrait with a beret he painted in 1866. Henri toulouse lautrec was a French artist who took lots of poetic license in his selfies. In real life, he was misfigured as a result of broken bones. So in many of his self-portraits, he often hid the lower half of his body, uh, as in this self-portrait, which he completed in 1882. Or he drew himself as he wished he looked, or maybe how he thought things might have been if not for fate, such as in this 1883 selfie. Wanting to branch out from landscapes and interiors, but too poor to afford models, Vincent van Gogh painted more than 30 selfies in less than four years, including self-portrait of an artist in 1888 and self-portrait with a bandaged ear in 1889. Egon Scheele has been called the Expressionist's Expressionist. His work often shows misfigured bodies, and he didn't shy away from X-rated content. He died at the age of 28, but not before he immortalized himself with this 1911 self-portrait with black vase and spread fingers. There is no better reference for an artist than to be considered a degenerated artist by Adolf Hitler, as Max Beckmann was considered. You can see the influence of previous masters like Rembrandt in his work, and this is his 1919 self-portrait with a glass of champagne. Another child prodigy, Mexican artist Frido Kahlo, started painting herself in her teens. We're thinking she was the least vain of any of the masters, often including her slight mustache in her self-portraits. She had a habit of exaggerating in her work, which she considered to be her ugliest features. Lots of times she was surrounded in her self-portraits with plants and animals, as she is here in self-portrait with Bonito from 1941. But there were a lot of indoor selfies too, with her dog here in 1938. Having been the victim of an accident that almost killed her, she was actually hit by a bus. Uh, Callow often used her self-portraits to alleviate her physical and emotional pain by sharing with us, as she does here. Here in this painting. This watercolor is thought to be the first self-portrait by aspiring artist Adolf Hitler, and we're a little squeamish about including him with the masters. This work reveals the loneliness and despair of someone unable to connect with other people. Pablo Picasso's earliest known self-portrait from 1896 is shown here, and it doesn't even look like what we've come to expect from a Picasso. As with Rembrandt, his selfies chronicle his journey as an artist. This one is drawn at the beginning of his blue period when he was 20. Six years after that came his first cubist self-portrait. And finally, in the summer of 1972, self-portrait facing death. Barclay L. Hendricks wasn't quite as fascinated with himself as some other masters, but he couldn't resist using himself as a subject, especially when making a social or political statement. In My Man, Superman, Superman never saved any black people, said Bobby Seale. From 1969, Hendricks shows himself as a superhero. In 1977, he showed his stuff and some say too much of his stuff, in Brilliantly Endowed. Here we're showing only the top half of his self-portrait. Finally, Andy Warhol joked that he created selfies to remind himself he was still alive. This is his selfie from 1978. So there you have it, from prehistoric times to recent times, our take on the art of selfies. Thanks for watching.